Hi right, folks, my name is Adam and I like to make things. Today I'm going to show you how I made this tiny LED lighthouse and put it on a giant traveling turtle. As is always the case whenever I'm building something out of a polymer clay, I always need to start with an armature. Here I just crushed up some aluminium foil and then rammed a semi-turtle shaped bit of uh, wire into the tip of it. It's held in place just a little bit of CA glue as well. Then it comes a case of actually building up the body of the turtle. To do this I just use a bit of the Super Scopey Firm which I'll wrap around the top of it using a fairly flat piece and then even out all the sides using little bits of the offcut. I want to leave the bottom open so that eventually I can pull all this aluminium out because I want it to be hollow so I can put the battery pack for the light within it. Once I've got the general shape of the head mapped out, I can start working on the eyes. So with the end of my tool, I'll press in a couple holes for the eye socket, and then I'll roll a couple small balls which I can place inside. Once I'm happy with the eyeballs themselves, I can take a tiny bit of the clay and start to shape out the eyebrows or the brow ridge. Because he's a fairly old looking turtle, or that's the aesthetic I'm going for, I went with some very large ridges. I'll add more clay in as I need to. Before I do that, I want to make sure that I mark out the place for the nose and then cut along where the mouth is going to be. This lets me have a visual cue as to where I'm going to start adding the rest of the clay on to build up the facial features. I'll start with the remainder of the eye sockets by adding little snakes down at the bottom and I'll blend that into where I've drawn that line for the mouth. Here I'm just getting proportions a bit better by adding balls of clay in places that I want it to look a bit more pronounced. So on the beak, behind the eyes, and a little bit atop the head. A little bit of clay along the bottom will let me bulk out the bottom jaw, and then once that's squared up I can blend that into the lines that I'd cut previously just for his mouth. Then it's just a case of flattening and smoothing out sections and adding some more balls of clay behind the ears uh, and along the neck just to give it the right proportions for what I'm after. Finally, I'll go through the whole thing with some isopropyl alcohol on a brush. This is a fairly stiff brush so that while I'm going across the entire thing, it's adding a tiny bit of what I like to think is kind of a leathery texture. Once that's finished, I can start working on the shell itself. I've rolled out a fairly thick piece of clay using my pasta machine, which I can then press onto the back and start to roll in just using some of my tools. I'm not too worried about getting rid of the shape of the shell since I do want it to look a little bit worn anyways. I'll come back through with my small knife sort of tool and start to cut little ridges into the shell. This will add a little bit more texture to it, give the wash somewhere to soak when I start to do my final painting, and it'll also act as a guide for cutting the sections of the shell. I probably should have planned out a bit better the pattern, since this will be fairly visible and it'll also be the way that I determine the paint that goes onto it, um, but hindsight being what it is, there's not much I can do about it now. Once I've cut the lines using my shaping tool, I'll go back through with the soft clay shaper just to get rid of some of the harsh cuts. Finally, along the outside, I'm going to shape it a tiny bit using my spoon, and then I'll come back through with that isopropyl alcohol, coat the entire thing down, and really go heavily over with that stiff brush. This will give it that really nice texture, and it'll also get rid of my various fingerprints. I must have gone through about a dozen different attempts at building the lighthouse and was starting to lose the will to live. Then I watched a video from Jeremy at Black Magic Craft where he shows how he builds a modular mage tower using discs of foam. It was exactly what I was trying to do but with polymer clay instead. So using the same principles I cut out a bunch of small discs that I could fit together afterwards. It also meant that I was able to keep the middle clear which would allow me to pass the cable for lighting at the end. So big props to Black Magic Craft. Once I'd cut all the discs out, I baked them so that I could start sanding all the sharp edges. It was a bit of a tedious process, but if you take the time to do it right, it ends up making a world of difference in the end.
To cut out the bricks, I took a small needle file and worked my way around the outside of each of the discs. I didn't mark any distances because I wanted to avoid a uniform look. I want the tower to look like it's been rocking back and forth on the back of a seabound creature, so loose bricks and an awkward lean are perfect. The bottom of the tower will be a little bit thicker than the top of the tower, so I want to add a small ledge in the middle with almost a balcony, just to separate the bottom from the top. I made a few more discs out of unbaked clay and then cut them into rounded bricks. I'll then glue them together to make the part of the lighthouse that will house the light. I found the easiest way to do this was to make two identical parts, bake them separately, then glue them together afterwards. Same as before, it's a bit slower than the alternative, but the results speak for themselves. Once all the pieces are together and the tower has been glued, I'll start working on the accessories. The door is just a bit of Sculpey cut into shape and glued onto the bottom of the tower. Then tiny bricks are used to outline the door frame. Using my scalpel, I'll cut some ridges into the door to simulate the look of wood. It'll make it a little easier to paint later down the line. And then I'll cut the center out just using that same scalpel to make it appear that there's two doors. For the shingles on the roof, I went with blue Fimo, which I cut into a ball and using my shaping tool added tiny shingles around the edge. I made a separate Sculpey dome that I attached to the top of the lighthouse, which will help me give the shingles a sloped look. And then I repeated this process twice more using smaller circles, finally capping the top with a tiny blue dome. The last step for the tower itself was to add the base, so I cut out another big circle, cut some fairly large looking blocks of stone into it, and then went around the outside with just some Sculpey, which I will use as the grass section when I add in the flocking afterwards. Then once that's had its final bake, you're ready to paint the entire thing. And this is probably the first time that I think I've ever had a really good time with the entire painting process. I don't know if it was because of the colors I was using, or it was because of the size of this piece, um, or it was the style that I was painting with, but I thoroughly enjoyed doing this. Using the airbrush made what could have been a super tedious job much easier and much more enjoyable. Basically, I started with a light brown, just a terra, and then started adding on just bits of darker brown. So I added a little bit darker brown here and there into the paint and just mixed it straight in the pot. I know you're really not supposed to mix in the pot, but I couldn't help myself and because I was using the same colors just in darker versions, it saved a lot of time doing it that way. Once that was finished, I went across with a bone white and did a lot of highlights just with dry brushing and then touched up a lot of the brick just using a basic sort of stone gray. I wanted to give the tower some color. I didn't want to really paint too much because I wanted to keep that nice stony gray, um, but I did want to give it a little bit more character. I wanted it to look like it's been sitting on that turtle for decades. Uh, to do this, I added in just a bunch of bricks in different colors. First, I went across with a light gray and then went back through with varying degrees of grayish, yellow, uh, orange, amber, that sort of thing. Then the last touches will be a heavy coat of wash to get all the gaps and fill in the spots between the bricks. And then I need to paint the door, the deck, and the bottom door as well. Before we can run any of the wires, we need to make sure that we have a hole drilled through the bottom of the tower. So I'll just use a big drill bit to drill through the back of the turtle, which I can then run the wire up through. Then all I need to do is figure out the proper placement and then I will drill the exact same hole in the piece of MDF I've got, cut out a fairly large, if ugly, hole in the bottom of that which I can then run all of the wiring through. I've taken the time to pull all the aluminium out of the bottom of the turtle which will give me lots of space inside but it won't lose any of its rigidity now that I've baked it and then a very thick bead of hot glue around the outside 
before I place that down. I want a really thick bead of glue because I want to make sure that it is sealed so that when I add my resin in, it's not going to seep through and fill in basically the cavity of his body. I hummed and hawed about how blue I wanted the water to be, but because I want him to be floating along in an ocean, because it's got to be deep enough that a lighthouse would make sense, I went with a few drops of fairly dark dye, which I can then pour just directly onto the base. I'm reusing the silicone mold that I made a while back in my floating island tutorial. It works a treat for this because the MDF bases I use are all the same size. This is also as easy as a resin pour can be, but it was a bit nerve-wracking hoping that my hot glue seal would work properly. Now that the body of the turtle is done and the tower is finished, I want to start adding all the little bits on to give it a little bit more life. My idea here was to add sort of a scaffolding around the outside of it, so I took some more of my brown Fimo and cut some small planks into it. Using the same technique I used for the door, I'll score this so that it looks a little bit more wood-like, and then I'll make sure that they're all separated properly. These will go into the oven with just a whole bunch of other various pieces. I don't really have a plan here. I figured I'd just make a whole lot of parts and then see what I actually keep at the end. When I was looking at some of the concept art for medieval docks and pirate docks and those sorts of things, one of the common themes was one of those large wooden cranes. So I wanted to make something like that. I cut out a couple circles and then using the various little bits and pieces I had, I just started gluing it together seeing what looked good. This probably would have gone a lot better if I'd sort of planned it out ahead of time but I thought that it would be a little bit more fun just to make something kind of ramshackle. So I glued a bunch of pieces together and then just started adding them into whatever I thought looked best. To make the rope, I took some of my twine and unwound it so that I had a single thread, which I could then glue across the top. And then I took some of the full thread and wound it around the outside, gluing it in place and then gluing that smaller thread on top to make it look like one uniform piece. Then the last step was to glue my tiny boat onto the end of it so it looked like it was hanging off the edge. Then I glued a couple of the pieces of planks together, ran some board across the bottom of them to make sort of a base a platform on which this could be glued. And then at this point, it's just a case of taking all these little pieces and attaching them onto the bottom of the turtle itself. As with most of these things, I don't really have much of a plan for it, so I just started sticking things on and hoping they looked good. Using the same unwound thread, I super glued that onto the tiny pegs that I had put onto the corners of the planks to give it a sort of uh, ropey rail look. The last step as far as the scaffolding was concerned was to add in little barrels and chests and crates and then I made a little bit of rope just taking my twine and winding it with a little bit of super glue. This gave it a bit of rigidity and made it look like stacked rope that was either waiting to be used or had been set aside for some other purpose. A little bit of green paint onto the center was the guidelines for where I was going to put in the turf. It also meant that once I added in that green flock, it would almost act as like a thin layer of grass underneath. I went a little heavy handed with the turf, but that's just because I wanted to make sure that it really looked overgrown in the center. 
I then went back through with the same Mod Podge and then applied a thin layer up the entirety of the tower, which would then give me a little bit of vine growing up it. I think this added a lot of depth to it and really makes it look like a single piece that's growing out of it. I also thought, why the hell not, let's add a tiny bit to the top of his head. I don't know whether that's realistic, but it's a big turtle with a tower on its back, so realism is not my biggest concern at this point. I added a couple more bushes in just to give it a bit of depth, and then that was basically it finished as far as the plant life was concerned. All I needed to do was add in a couple more planks just to connect sort of the top grassy area to the scaffolding around the edge, a couple little boards for steps, and then along with the rest of the body of the wood, I went through and added a little bit of black wash just to highlight all those cracks. A final thick layer of isopropyl alcohol and then a little bit of the scenic cement covering the entire thing means that it's all locked in place and I don't need to worry about knocking it off. To finish it all off, I added a nice thick layer of gloss Mod Podge to the resin. A straw works wonders here for giving the waves a more natural look, and I work in small sections to make sure that it doesn't harden too much before I get a chance to shape it. Once that layer is dried, I'll take my heavy gel medium and make bigger waves. These give the turtle a sense of movement and give the water a bit more shape. I'll draw some lines from the center of the turtle moving to the back, and then I'll use a little bit of a stippling effect to add kind of a foamy wake. Once this dries, it'll end up being perfectly clear, so I'll go back through some white acrylic paint and go over the tips of the waves and then do the same thing behind the turtle where the wake bubble sort of effect would be as well. With everything else done, it's time to add the lighting. I have a box full of those flameless LED tea lights, which I figured would work perfectly for a lighthouse. They've got a natural flicker to them, and it will look great coming out the top of it. I pulled the LED out and wired it to a small 3 volt switch, and then it's just a case of running the light up the hollowed out tower and using a dab of hot glue to hold it in place. A second MDF disc on the bottom will hide the unsightly wiring, but make it accessible if I need to change the lights. With that we're finished, and I think this has to be my favorite piece yet. It was a blast to design, sculpt, and paint, and I really love how it turned out. I hope you liked the video and you're inspired to try it yourself. If you want to see more of this sort of thing, leave a comment, hit that like button, subscribe and share the video. Doing these things tells YouTube that this is content that's worth seeing and helps me chase that ever elusive algorithm. I try and make a video every week, so if you want to see more of this, just come back next week and we'll do it again. Cheers!